Trickle Falls is known to be one of the most challenging trails on Macra Peak, famous for its chunky, awkward technical sections and narrow trail. Paul, Brad and I will be showing you some of the good and some of the not so good ways to get down this track. If you've ever peered over the entrance to Trickle Falls and thought to yourself, hmm, I don't really feel like dying today, well, then this gnarly filter feature is doing its job. That being said, it's not as bad as it looks, but you'll want to be comfortable riding Vertigo and Ridgeline before attempting this track. The first roll down of Trickle has two main lines. The left line is steep and chunky but sets you up really nicely for the following corners. Whereas the right line is a bit smoother and less steep, but makes the following corner a tad more difficult. I'm taking the left line here, after that steep roll down I'll try and scrub off some speed, and then set up as far right as possible. This allows me to carry plenty of exit speed through the corner. Paul's taking the right line here. You can see the roll down's a lot less aggressive, but it sets him up at a pretty awkward angle for that next corner. After this you've got a short pedally section, for the entrance to Yeh Nara on the right. The next feature can be ridden as either a drop or a roll. If you want to do the drop, you're best riding off the right hand side, whereas if you're looking to do the roll, the left hand side is a much smoother transition. Here's Paul hitting the roll, and here's Brad going for the drop. After this there's a short flat section before you get to the next feature, an awkward off camber right hand corner. There's two main lines to this corner, the safest is the right hand line that takes you close to the cabbage tree. The problem with this line is that you have to slow down significantly to avoid clipping your bars. It's also got quite a chunky exit. Here's Paul taking the inside line. The high line is significantly more committing, but rides much smoother and faster than the inside line. You need to have a decent amount of speed to hold this line as the rocks are quite off camber. I'd recommend giving this line a miss in the wet. This next feature has a ton of line options. Personally, I find it to be the scariest part of the trail when the track's a bit wet. The most obvious line is the drop on the far right. This requires no small amount of precision to get right. On more than one occasion I've ended up off the side of the track with my bike on top of me. Not a fun situation. This next line's a gap. Hopping over a hole and utilising this bit of off camber rock is the landing. It's definitely the race line for all the pinners out there. It may not look like much on camera, but I assure you it's plenty sketchy in real life. <laughs> oh, that didn't feel too bad. This next line is probably the smoothest line, but also the slipperiest in wet weather on account of being completely off camber. Here's Brad riding the line. The final line is high left. It's easily the chunkiest of the lines, but actually rides quite well. The rocks in it are all reasonably level, so it remains my go-to line in wet weather. This next section is quite narrow. You can take the right line, but it takes you a bit too close to that tree for comfort. Going high left on the entrance to this section will allow you to carry your speed. From there you can drop back into the main rut. Brad had to head off, so it's just Paul and I from now on. See ya! Here's Paul taking the high line the whole way down. You can see it sets him up with a lot of speed for the corner. Up next is another rocky step that can either be dropped or rolled. The top of this feature is quite chunky, so you want to make sure you have your line sussed before going for the drop. It's worth noting that there are two large rocks just at the exit to this feature. The roll will spit you out to the right of these rocks, whereas the drop will spit you out to the left. As you're approaching the feature you can just see the big rock that you need to avoid. So here's the drop line that spits you out to the left, and the roll line that takes you around to the right. Here's Paul hitting the drop, and me going down the roll. Next up we've got a steep roll down into a flat left hand corner. There are three lines to get down this feature. All of them are fairly steep and require you to almost stop at the bottom to make it round that flat loose corner. 
The left line is the steepest and sharpest of the three. It's also the hardest to get around that last bit of corner. The middle line has you turning the whole way around. I find it gives you the most exit speed. The right hand line is a steep drop into a sharp corner. It's pretty tricky to get around. Here's a first person view of us riding down the middle line. There's also a fun little wall right here, if that's your thing. This next section is the fastest and flattest part of the whole trail. There's a deep and narrow rut the whole way through, so it's pretty easy to mess up. Feels a little bit like this. There's a small drop on this section of trail, but as long as you've got your line right, it shouldn't cause any issues. The track changes character rather dramatically at this point, going from open air clay soil to closed canopy with rich and grippy soil. There also seems to be a lot less bedrock in the second half of the trail. These rocks get really greasy when it's wet, so I find the trails a little bit easier from here on out. At this point, the track splits into a high line and a low line. The high line rides well, but it sets you up poorly for the next section. A few meters ahead of this, you'll find a big rock that splits the path in two. If you go left and stay on this line, you'll be forced into a big boulder that basically pushes you off the side of the track. We had a few goes at attempting to cut back into the right line, but it's super difficult. Here's that big rock I was talking about that pushes you off the left of the track. Here's a quick attempt of me trying to cut back onto the right line. No luck. And here's Paul giving the whole line a go. So starting off with the high line, going left, and then trying to go to the left of that boulder at the end. Game over. Nowhere to go. Alright, so I'm guessing you've figured out from my rant that the low line's the best starting point. That sets you up nice and high right, and then you can make it through the rest of the section. I'm pretty curious to see if anyone can actually make that high line work. If you have figured it out, film it and tag me on Instagram. Maybe we can make it a bit of a challenge. Next up, there's an optional drop. There's a beeline to the left if drops aren't your thing, but if you're after a fast run, then the drop's definitely the way to go. There's a few jagged rocks on the face of the drop, so I probably wouldn't roll it unless you have a long bike. Here's my attempt at the drop. I take it pretty slow and give it a pedal kick just to manage my speed. Paul comes in a bit faster. Maybe a bit too fast. Whoa! <laughs> Shit, dude. You okay? Oh, hi. <laughs> This next S-Bend corner is quite steep and narrow. There's nothing too challenging about it, but the entrance might cause a few little issues. There's a couple of roots and rocks that protrude from the inside of the corner, so if you ride left foot forward you might just want to watch out for that. Paul mentioned that he switches leading foot halfway through the corner. I don't know about you, but I find it really awkward to ride opposite foot forward. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you do. This next left-hander is crazy tight. It's the kind of feature that you'd only really find in Wellington. To top it off, you've also got a big drop off the left-hand side of the track. Not something that you want to screw up. And here goes Paul again with his backpedaling halfway through the corner. Maybe he's onto something. There's a couple of off camber routes in this section that kind of want to funnel you down to the gully below. Hitting this section with a bit of speed and keeping high left will make things a bit easier. There's a nice little meandering section here along the river. Once you cross it, you've got the exit to Yenar on your right, and then a chunky rock section over the river again. And finally, you've got the last feature of the track, two off-camber rock roll downs that spit you out of the track namesake, Trickle Falls. The first rock roll down has a big hole on the right hand side of it. So long as you keep high left and follow the worn in line, it should ride quite nicely. Again, the second rock roll is pretty much the same thing. There's a big hole on the right hand side and a smoother line on the left near the wall. So as long as you keep left and high on this line, you shouldn't have any issues. It's practically a tradition to get your shoes soaked on this very last section of track. Don't even try and fight it, it's a badge of honour. Now that you're down, you can take a deep breath and enjoy this nice leisurely cruise next to the creek. Alright, that's enough relaxation. Let's talk about Yenar. 
If you're planning on tackling Ye Na at some stage, I'd recommend getting super comfortable on trickles first. If you're hitting all the A-lines and drops without too much problem, then maybe you're ready to take on the final boss of Macro Peak. Alright, that's it from me for now. Let me know in the comments below what other trails you'd like me to break down. Also, let me know what you think about having a set of challenges associated with each trail. So for trickle, it would be the gap at 2 minutes 40 seconds and the cut in line at 6 minutes 36. As always, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing.